Hello, you wonderful people. Did you know that Strapi has a new rich text block editor, which is pretty awesome. Now you're able to use this amazing block editor to add your content. But how do you render it in your front end? Because when we take a look at the response, it doesn't return regular markdown, but it returns JSON data. So this is what we're going to cover in this video. I'm going to show you how to render this new format in your front end project. And for this, we're going to use Next.js as an example. So let's get started. So I already have my Strapi project installed with this new block editor that I'm using here. We are already returning the data. And now I just set up a brand new Next.js project using NPX create next app at latest. So now in VS Code, let's navigate to app global.css. First thing we're going to do is just remove all the CSS that came with the project. We are going to keep the Tailwind imports here. And back in our page.tsx, we're going to go ahead and remove the main and all the template code. And we're just going to create an empty main block with just some basic styling. Perfect. And let's comment out this image import for now. Next, we're going to go to our GitHub at Strapi blog dash react dash renderer. And you could also Google this to find it, but I'll make sure to put it in the description below. And if you navigate to the bottom, you're going to see the instructions of getting started. Since we're using Next.js, I'm just going to copy the first part of the command. And let's go ahead, paste it inside our terminal and click enter to install the package. Let's start our application by running yarn dev. After installing the package, let's go ahead and import it here at top of the file. I'm going to go ahead and copy this first part and paste it in. Nice. Next, we want to make sure that we're getting our data from Strapi. And what's awesome, because we're using Next.js server components, we're able to create a simple function that gets the data. So here I have a function called get Strapi data, and we're making a simple fetch request to our notes API. And this will go ahead and fetch our notes data. And what's awesome, again, because of React server components, we are able to make our function async and directly call it in our component. So you're going to say cons and we're going to destructure data equals await get strappy data. Now I'm going to go ahead and save the content of the note to our content variable that we could pass into our block renderer. So I'm going to go ahead, use our block renderer component and pass our content. We could also add a heading to see our title. So now let's make sure our application is running by running yarn dev and see if we're getting our data. Nice, and that worked. We're getting our data, but it's not that pretty. Let's go ahead and fix that. So navigating to global CSS, I'm going to paste a little snippet, but basically you could individually target the elements that you want. You could have a class. I just did it in the simplest way possible to give some basic styling to our data. After our styling was applied, we could see that our content looks a little bit better. If you want to further customize your block renderer, you can do so either by adding additional class names to existing components, like here, they're adding a new class name to the paragraph, or you could pass whole new custom components if you like. So let's take a look how we could customize our renderer to use Next.js image. And it's going to be a little bit tricky and I'll show you why. So navigating to our block renderer, we have an ability to pass blocks props. And I already created this example. That's why VS Code Copilot is showing us the snippet, but I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in. But what you're able to do is you're able to point to a block renderer prop. And if you forget what they are, you could check in the documentation. Here it says you have your paragraph, your heading, your list, your quote, your code, your image, your link, and you could also pass some modifier. So we're going to overwrite our image to use a custom component. So this is complaining because we want to number one, import image from next. So let's go ahead and undo this import. And we have some extra brackets here. Of course, Copilot likes to do that. So now look, it's not complaining. And in theory, this should all work. So let me restart my application and see what happens. And we get this error. Functions cannot be passed directly to client components unless explicitly exposed by making it use server. And let me tell you, if I put use server in that function, right here, use server, it is not going to fix a problem. And so it says server actions must be async functions. Sure, I could go ahead and do that. So let's say uh, sync. And so we get this additional error. Async await is not yet supported in client components, only server components. And the reason why is that our block renderer is a client component. And that's why this is not working. So instead of this solution, I'm going to show you another thing we could do. So instead of doing it this way, let me back up here to our original code here. And instead, what we could do is to create a new component wrapper for our 
block renderer. So here's an example of what I mean. I created a component called block renderer client, and I'm saying use client, and now I'm able to do everything that I was doing before, but because I'm using use client directive, it's not gonna complain. So I'm able to pass my blocks with my Next.js image component, provide all the necessary data, and it's gonna work. And so now if I go back to page.tsx, and instead of block renderer, I import our client component and make sure we get the import here, import block renderer client, and now everything should work. Let's inspect our element. And if we expect an image component, we could tell that it's using our next image component, which is pretty awesome. Now, if you did try this and this did not work and you got an error message, let me show you what I mean. And you got this error message, invalid source prop, localhost uploads and so on, our next image, that means you did not configure your next config.js uh, file. So if you go to your next config.js file, you want to make sure that you configure your image uh, properties here to allow uh, the pattern. And you could read more about this on next documentation, but you basically have to specify where the image is uh, coming from. And once you do that and you refresh, everything is going to work. I hope you enjoyed this video where we took a look at how to use the new blocks from Strapi. And we saw how to implement it in your next JS application, including some of the gotchas that we were able to work around. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.